there are plants that are non-native that are invading our natural areas. They're called invasive exotics, and Dennis Mudge, our Livestock and Natural Resources Extension Agent, is here to tell us all about them. Dennis, welcome. Hi, thank you. These invasive exotics, what's the problem with them? Well, they're plants that come in from other countries, and they have a serious problem when they arrive here because there aren't diseases nor insects that attack them. So they take off, and they grow in ways that other plants don't do. I think, you know, most of us are familiar with hearing about kudzu, but mm -hmm. we have our own plants in yeah. Central Florida that are like kudzu, don't we? Yes, we do. In fact, the one we're holding here, these, these potato vines, mm -hmm. if people go out in their yards, they'll find them on their trees. They're such a problem. There's actually two plants, an air potato and an air yam, and they're both invasive on the invasive list for, for the state of Florida. And their fruit is like potato-like, mm -hmm. and yeah. it drops to the ground and starts it all over again. <laughs> That's and right. th this is a, considered an invasive vine and we do see it in, in landscapes. Yes we do because it'll once it comes in and once the seed's been dropped it'll grow right up on top of things and it even hurts the plants it grows on because sometimes it grows so much so prolific Celeste that it can shut out the light to the other plants. And really c destroy a, a, a good plant or a native plant. What about some of the others that you brought? You brought a lot of them today. <laughs> yeah, we have a few with us. There are trees that you may have in your yard. Maybe you planted it 20 years ago, yeah. and now you find out it's on the invasive list. <laughs> Whoever thought that Chinese tallow was going to be such a problem? It's poisonous as well as, as being invasive. So if you have a Chinese tallow, you might want to be aware of the fact, don't let its babies spread. It spreads babies everywhere. I tell people to keep it as a shade tree and trimmed up, but don't let it have babies all over on the ground. That one and the Brazilian pepper oh, beside yeah. it Oops. is another one that's just pepper. growing on all of our stream beds and on down creeks and in so many areas. Brazilian pepper is completely out of control and uh, considered a huge problem. And then there's even this one over here. Uh, this one and not only is invasive a slice, but it's poisonous as well, the china berry. And, and you may have one of those in your yard, so you want to be aware of that. And a lot of these, like the Brazilian pepper, you know, the history of it, how did it get here? And well, some are brought in name. as farm plants to try to do some things with, but most of them weren't. Most of these plants were brought in as exotics, uh, planted. They thought they were going to be great in the mm -hmm. landscape and didn't turn out to be good. Or they got here by accident, seeds in a pot and that type of thing. But they're all plants on the list that are out of control. Um, there's a floridainvasive.org website. You can go on and see the long list of these plants. And we're looking for people to help, to actually help control them because they're out of control. Farmers have long fought these plants, trying to keep them out of the farmland. And you see the beautiful farm landscapes. You see they don't have them there. But in our parks and in our public lands and even on private lands, we see these and we're asking people to help control them and take care of your own land so that they don't spread. And it's not an easy job, is it? That's right. Getting rid of the plants. Yeah. There are some big events that go on in the county, though. We have something called a CISMA. It's a Cooperative Invasive Species Management Group, and I'm part of that group that's planning how to attack these plants to get them out of Florida. And we have events every so often, and anybody listening or watching can come and go to one of those events and go on with something like an air potato raid where we go actually and collect those potatoes up, put them in baskets and weigh them and get them out of here so we don't have so many next year. And the peppers, even with the peppers, they had a group called Pepper Busters that I don't know if it's still active, but they were in, because you see the Brazilian pepper, you know, um, it was originally called the Florida Holly, you know, planted because it does get the pretty red berries, but the birds eat the berries and off they go. and. You know, so it really is a big problem, isn't it? Yes, it is. And there's quite a long list of these plants. Uh, not just plants, but animals, too. Another time we can talk about that. But the plants are the biggest issue right now. And so what we're trying to do is help people uh, to be informed and to help us so that they can be involved and come out to some of the events where we can actually help to control. Well, Dennis, thank you for all this information about our invasive exotic plants. Thank you. It isn't too difficult to remove invasive exotic plants when they are in your landscape. It may take a community effort when they are in our natural areas. Mm -hmm.